You ever just build a character that was just so full of righteous indignation that he carried the force of the heavens in his anger and his fury? No, but that sounds like a fun build. Let's get to it. Hey y'all, ambiance Matt here a little bit while we have this little bit of a cutscene going on. Just want to let you know that we do have an active Discord. Well, active is generous, but we do have a Discord. I would love it if you guys came, hung out, chatted. We can talk about builds, D&D, questions, you name it. Come hang out. Alright, so admittedly, this is not a build that I have played before, but it is a build that I have DM'd for before, and I gotta tell you, I loved DMing for this player. He got really into the RP of it. He did a perfectly good job of his role as kind of an off-tank Nova. It was super interesting to you know, use him as a mm, focal point of the combats while letting everybody else kind of do their own things. And honestly, it's one of those things where I had a really fun time DMing for it. So I, I got to recommend it if, uh, if anybody is coming to you and looking for, oh, what should I play? I don't know what to do. Give me, give me something that's kind of unique. Well, listen here. This one is a good one. My goodness, we are fluffy tonight. Let's go. So this is, at its core, a palabarb. I don't really know what I'm going to call this as, like, how to build a. Uh, that'll be in the title. I'm sure you've seen it, and I'll come up with it later. For now, let's get to the build. It's a simple build. It is basically going to be six levels of paladin, three levels of barbarian, and then do whatever you want. I really recommend going sorcerer or barb for the extra spell slots and out of combat utility. Let's go ahead and get started with that. If we are going to go ahead and start with our race, I think that there's kind of two paths you can go here. There is the feet path and there is the resistance path. Honestly, I think that if you are going to be making that decision, it comes down to do you want more defense in, in one way or more offense in one way? And here's the options. If you want to go with the defense route, you're either going to go with an Emerald Dragonborn from Fizbins. This gives you Psychic Resistance as a racial ability, or a Kalashtar from the Eberron series, if your table uses the Eberron books, also gives you Psychic Resistance. And the astute among you, or common barbarian players among you, probably know exactly where I'm going with this way down the line, but we'll get there. If you want to go down the offense route, this is the better option. You want to go with either a custom lineage or a variant human, and for your feet, you are going to take the Polar Master. This is going to increase the amount of attacks and therefore smites that we're going to be able to do. Um, and also we're going to use a reach weapon, so it'll increase our ability to kind of influence a, well, area of influence. <laughs> You're going to put your, your stat points into strength, and Charisma, if you get an extra one from the, from the Dragonborn, put it in Constitution. Oddly enough, I really recommend going with the Standard Array on this one. Or if you're rolling, that's fine too. But Standard Array actually makes it a little bit easier for you to get all of the multi-classing and defensive requirements that we need without messing around with too many things. So, Standard Array, you're going to put 15 in Strength, 14 in Dexterity. That's going to be important later, and I'll tell you why. 12 in Constitution, 8 in Intelligence, 10 in Wisdom, and 13 in Charisma. The 13 in Charisma makes your bare minimum requirements for multi-classing out of Paladin when it is time. You don't ever have to worry about it. We can worry about pumping it later. Right now, we got to make sure that we have a 13 in Charisma. And having a 14 in Dexterity is basically for our armor. For your background, use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Pick a background that sounds fun for your RP. It, it's kind of irrelevant. You're going to take the starting class equipment for a paladin. You can take, you know, whatever armor. Our goal is to get to half plate at some point, um, ideally magical half plate. It's not that hard to get to half plate. I think to buy it from a shop is only like 750 gold. You should be able to get there in pretty low levels. You're not looking for that super expensive plate. You just need to get to half plate. We want a glaive or a halberd for our weapon. That's going to synergize nicely with our polearm master. Later on down the line, if you want to go for a great weapon master, you totally can. It's not really necessary in this build, especially because we're really going to be hurting for strength. Um, it's going to take a while to get to that plus five that we're going to need just because of the way that these multi-classing levels are going to shake out. For the next five levels, Paladin 1 through 6, we're going to stay on the straight path. So for the first six levels, you are playing a pure Paladin. 
you're going to run it like a normal paladin, you're not going to do really anything special. You get your smites and your spell casting at level 2. It really doesn't matter what spells you pick at all because we're mostly going to be using those slots for smiting. But, you know, the, the standard stuff, Bless is a good one, Command is a fun one as a paladin, you know, you name it, pick your favorite paladin spells at this point. Shield of Faith at this point is actually really good because you're going to get the benefit of your plus two from having a shield while also having your polearm. Uh, we're also going to get a fighting style. I really recommend defense. It's going to kind of take care of the difference between half plate and full plate. You know, you'll get from 17 to 18 without having to worry about it. That's really it. We're just going to kind of rock our way through all of this. As for your oath, pick whatever oath you want. It is totally up to you. I really recommend Watchers because the Channel Divinity is going to let you give pretty much your entire party advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saves for a minute. That's really nice considering the mental saves are going to be a, a, a big deal, right? Intelligence saves are going to fight a lot of stuns off. Wisdom saves are going to fight off a lot of your uh, fright and, and charm abilities. Charisma saves, less important early on, but later on gives you protection from banishment. You're going to have a much easier time making that or plane shift or all the other um, big kind of charisma saves. It doesn't come up as much as wisdom specifically and then intelligence, especially if you are in a mind flayer kind of campaign. Um, this is also a really great one if you're doing some kind of interplanar campaign. Oath of the Watchers is a lot of fun. For our ASI, we're just going to go plus two and then we get extra attack at five and aura protection at six. It's straightforward. We don't need to be very creative about this at all. You are playing a paladin from levels one to six. Let's not worry too, too much about it. But level seven, level seven is where things get fun. We're about to get angry and you won't like us when we're angry. We're now going to take two or three levels in Barbarian. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you go with three levels. It's going to let you get your subclass, and I think that if you're going to be going as a barbarian who's going to be without any kind of protection from, you know, a shield or anything like that, you gotta go totem barbarian, but slow down. We'll get there in a minute. First level barbarian gives us rage. Because we are only going to be wearing medium armor as half plate, we can still wear that while we rage. So while we are raging, we're going to get plus two damage, we're going to have all of the fun things that come with Rage, right? We get advantage on strength checks and saving throws. We are able to have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. It's a pretty basic Rage, but it's going to give us the damage reduction to stand in the middle and kind of taunt everything towards us as best we can. You can get Unarmored Defense, we're not going to worry about that, it's kind of useless to us. Barbarian 2, we get Danger Sense, which is going to give us advantage on Dexterity saving throws. We're going to have plus 2, plus our Charisma mod at this point, which is depending on if you rolled or did your, your uh, standard array or point by or whatever. It's going to be either plus 2 or plus 4 or whatever, right? In my build with standard array, you're looking at plus 4 on your Dexterity saves and advantage on them at that point. So it's a nice spot to be. We're also going to get Reckless Attack. This is going to be basically an enabler for eventually picking up Great Weapon Master, but it's also going to give us the opportunity to make as many of our attacks with advantage as possible, which means more smites. And this build is basically built around as being a paladin, dumping your spell slots into smites. Like I said, it's a Nova build that has a lot of damage reduction. Then for level three, Primal Path, I, I really kind of, messed around with the idea on this one and i kept coming back to bear totem like it's just so good especially if you pick the defensive path you have resistance to all damage across the board because you have the racial psychic resistance and then everything besides psychic from the bear totem if you went the offensive route okay you don't have resistance to psychic damage like that's let's be honest it's not that big of a deal the amount of times the psychic damage comes up is infinitesimal right mind flayers kind of an issue, but we're going to have the advantage on the saves there, so hopefully we'll make them, plus the aura protection, all that fun stuff. I think that you really can't go wrong. I messed around with the idea of going Storm Herald, but I think that our bonus action in Polar Master and being able to get smites that way is way more valuable than the Storm Herald auras that are out there. I messed around with mild, Wild Magic. It just didn't quite feel right for a Paladin to have Wild Magic. It felt like this weird, like... Uh, 
not the mix that you want of arcane and divine magic. Ancestral Guardian sounded really fun, but again, our bonus action I think is too precious in terms of outputting smites. So I kind of had to go with the totem, and the bear totem is just hands down the, the best option for a level 3 barbarian, and in this case a level 9 character. So at level 9 we're safely into tier 2, we have resistance to everything but psychic, we're, we have aura of protection so our enemies want to be, or sorry, we have aura of protection so our allies want to be near us, we have polar master so we're putting out 3 attacks at a time, all of those can be smites, we're not worried about our spell casting all, we you know, can pick our spells for a little bit of out of combat utility, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter. It's there for smites. And that's kind of the core of the build. You're level nine, you have some room to grow here. The big issue with going any farther in Barbarian, one, if you go one more level, you get an ASI. That's a good option. That can help us max out our strength, or we can pick up the Sentinel feat. There's a couple of options there. Um, realistically, your best option is going to be maxing out your strength score at that point. I wouldn't go another level, because five Barbarian is a dead level. Extra attacks don't stack in 5e, so realistically you'd be leveling up with no real benefit. You could go back to Paladin if you want the seventh level aura ability. Watchers is okay. I don't think it's fantastic. I don't think you really need to be going more into Paladin. My real recommendations here are going to be either going into Sorcerer or Bard. Bard will be good to give out your Bardic Inspirations like right before a fight or right before you are you know, going about doing your, your Smite 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 rotations. Or if you don't want to use the Polar Master bonus action ability, you can use your bonus action to give out an Inspiration. Um, or if you go Sorcerer, you are looking at Meta Magic, which you can kind of use to, you know, quicken a hold person, and then next turn Rage. You don't really necessarily need to do it, it kind of gives you more options. It's kind of up to you at that point. This build is, is complete at level 9, so you have a lot of flexibility. That's, that's the first half of the game. You still have 11 to 20. To, to build however you want. And like I said, my recommendations are going to be Bard or Sorcerer pretty much exclusively for the spell slots because you're going to be smiting a ton. For any RP options that you're looking at, I mean, you are full of righteous indignation. You are full of divine fury. You are the hand of the gods. You are the spear of the gods, if you want to look at it from kind of that point of view. There's a lot of good options. You are sent there just to be a force of nature for the gods. Like I said, we are mainly paladin, so we're going to be looking a little bit at the divine side more than anything. As for damage output, like I said, our strength is going to be lagging a little bit, so we want to make sure that we are trying our best to compensate for that. But we are looking at 2d10 plus our strength mod, plus 1d4 plus our strength mod as kind of base before we get to smiting. Every smite is then, you know, 2d8 on top of that, so you can get up to 6d8 if you use all of your first level slots at that point. And you are looking at this much damage. I'll put it on screen. <laughs> I can't do the math in my head. It's, it's very Nova. It is very Nova. Listen to me. It is very Nova. We're not looking for sustained DPS here. You're just going to be able to put plus two from your rage on there, and you have resistance to everything but psychic damage if you go the human or custom lineage route. You have resistance to everything if you went the gem dragonborn or Kalashtar route. What do you want to do from here? You tell me. What do you think levels 11 through 20 should be? I'm very interested to see. And what names do you think that we should go with this? Like I said, I haven't decided what the name of this build is yet, but I'm sure by the time this comes up, it'll be in the title. So, what other things do you come up with? I know that when I did the Inquisitors, you guys said, well, I built an Inquisitor like this, or I built an Inquisitor like this. Well, how would you build the Paladin Barbarian? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I will see you over in the Discord.